Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the US dollar index overlaid over the silver spot index in the daily chart. Reason I'm bringing this up is because we're seeing weakness coming into the dollar right here. Not a lot, but you can see it's off its highs. But we're still seeing weakness in silver. Now, a lot of people believe that those are always going to be inversely correlated, and they most of the time they are. You can see that if we go back to the weekly, that uh, you would have to say that for the most part, when one is rising, the other is falling. Yeah, let's just put the lines in to give you a general idea. So when the one is rising, the other is falling. When this one starts rising, this one starts falling. And when this one starts rising, this one starts falling. Same thing here. So that's the general trend of things. But you can see that as we get you know close in, that that's not holding up right now. Do I think that that will continue? No, I don't. I don't think that the dollar can sell off and not have silver rally. But we're at an interesting time right now because silver is being tested and the metal, pardon the pun, of the silver stackers is being tested by these artificially low prices. Now we know they're artificially low because there's a lot of product you can't get. There's a lot of premiums that uh, are higher than the price that's gone down. Uh, in some senses we've kind of found a bottom already because when we had the big drop the other day, this drop here, uh, I'm sorry, no, actually it was this drop here. Um, the premiums actually expanded more than the, the silver drop. So in a sense, you could say that a bottom of the physical had been found. We don't know yet if that's true, but that's the kind of indications that we saw in the past, whether it was the 2008 action or uh, the 2013 action as well. Um, when those bottoms were put in, we started to see physical silver bottom before the paper price bottomed. And that makes sense because things, you know, they, they can only push things so far. And uh, then they're, they're going to disconnect. Now, I wanted to look at some of the miners here. I, I forgot to bring up the charts. So let's see if we can find them here. Uh, one was uh, Pan American Silver. We'll see if that one comes up. Yeah, it does. And as you know, I said for the longest, longest time uh, that these, these things are a bust, that there's no way you want to invest in these miners because their boards are corrupt, they're driving into bankruptcy, and uh, the, you know, uh, there's just no way to win. Uh, and you can see here, you, you're lower now than you were in 2009. We're actually lower than 2002. So when we're looking at physical silver, let's just go ahead and put up a silver cross on this. So there's the silver cross. They had outperformed silver by vast amounts back here in 2008, but you can see now the stock, this is just the one stock, you know, but I'm sure I know because I looked, uh, I think the other one, let's let's do another one here. But you can see here 50% lower. And uh, let's, I think it's Endeavor Silver. Let's look up that one. Endeavor Silver Corporation. There's some that are worse than others. So here's Endeavor Silver Corporation. You can see this is a Canadian company, but you can see this. This is this is like all-time lows here in this stock. Unfortunately, we don't get it back to um, the dates that we wanted to. So let's pull up another one here. Let's pull up Silver Wheaton. And you can see that just a catastrophic drop there uh, just recently. And again, this one doesn't go back as far as we'd like, but uh, if you want to, you could look it up on Yahoo. So these miners are actually underperforming the silver price. 
That's to be expected. As I've said, the explanation is really simple when you think about it. If you're in the business of mining something or manufacturing, it doesn't matter what it is, no matter what you're doing. If you're in the business of selling something, that the government has a policy of suppressing the price below a market clearing level, be below a level that's profitable based on the amount of labor and energy and uh, investment that needs to go into it, then obviously you're in a money losing business. So I'm not in the camp with Peter Schiff and many, many others that are talking about the stocks. Um, there's no point in even talking about stocks until the manipulation is over. When the manipulation is over, yes, you might be able to be looking at stocks. But they, then again, with the rule of law being so broken as it is in this country, things like the DTCC, failures to deliver what I mentioned the other day of how more shareholders showed up than more stock showed up in the shareholders' hands than had been issued by the company. Um, you just can't do that. So let's jump over to the big story here. Talking about Donald Trump. This is making the rounds here. Personally, I believe this is a distraction. Um, my best guess is that he's going to bow out of the race. Um, you saw the same thing with uh, Ross Perot. You saw the same thing with, um, I don't remember the name of the guy who did that crazy call and then he was uh, dropped out of the race. He was another guy, had a couple of elections ago. Uh, we saw it with Ron Paul, a big hope on Ron Paul, and then poof, gone. I think the same thing's going to happen with Donald Trump. I think I personally think, again, it's just my opinion, the whole thing's rigged and a big waste of time. But let's look at what's going on here. This is uh, the GOP enters panic mode. Des Moines Register calls for Trump to withdraw from the presidential race. When Donald Trump announced he would give 2016 another try as Republican presidential candidate, the GOP saw him as a mild nuisance. Little did they appreciate how big of a nightmare he would soon become, a nightmare which now sees the flamboyant billionaire whose self-reported net worth fluctuates daily with a double-digit percentage lead over his closest competitor, Scott Walker. And there you can see the, the charts. But the biggest mistake the GOP did is they, their inability to comprehend that either the U.S. public enjoys being trolled or is just so sick of the left-right paradigm, it will gladly latch on to anyone, even the most farcical, self-lampooning candidate who promises a break from the old routine, which has proven not to work for the common American. The latest confirmation that the Trump nightmare is causing not only sleepless nights, but also panic attacks for a GOP that is scrambling to respond to the Donald's juggernaut is not only open attempts at caricature, which, however, merely feed Trump's ego and push him to troll his accusers even more, but to use the influential Des Moines Register, Iowa's largest newspaper and critical voice when it comes to endorsing or panning presidential candidates in his first caucus state to call Donald Trump to drop out of the 2016 presidential race. Officially, the Register's position was simply an escalation of the furor over the real estate magnate's weekend comments about Senator John McCain's service during the Vietnam War, as Fox reports in an editorial piece published late Monday. The Register said Trump's comments were not merely offensive, they were disgraceful, so much in fact that they threatened to derail not just his campaign, but the manner in which we choose our nominees for president. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but he hinted at, and there's a lot of conspiracies about John McCain. He's, he's hinting at the fact that basically McCain was a traitor. And, that, uh, and there is a lot of evidence to show that there's a lot of shady stuff going on with McCain. And if you look at how he's controlled, he's clearly no Republican. Or I mean, he's well, he is a Republican, but he's no conservative. Republicans aren't conservatives anymore. And that and that's you know another thing about this election. Uh, I agree. I don't listen to or agree with Rush Limbaugh on much of anything because I think he's like a, probably a Jesuit agent. But but I do agree with him about the fact that many more people are conservative than they give credit for. I think that probably half the country is conservative. Uh, and uh, it would be easy for a conservative to win. But the establishment, the political establishment, the Republican political establishment, uh, these are all either controlled or they're leftists. And so it's very difficult for anybody to, you know, it, in fact, it's impossible. 
But so these people that are supposedly conservatives really aren't conservatives, and a typical rhino is, is John McCain. So another side note on this is this kind of borders on conspiracy theory, and that's anathema to the press. Anybody, if you remember, Rand Paul had to come out and say he backs vaccines because you know no no candidate can openly run against vaccines, even though we know it's the truth that they're poison designed by big pharma and doctors to kill people. But no one can run on that because, again, anything that has a hint of conspiracy theory uh, is dismissed. So that's what's going on with Trump. Again, my prediction, he will drop out. He will leave a gigantic hole, probably filled by Scott Walker, and then he'll go and lose to Hillary. Most likely that's what's going to happen. And I want to revisit what I talked about in the past about what people should be doing rather than spending their efforts and money on these presidential elections. This one is projected to be a $5 billion presidential campaign. The 2016 presidential election could cost as much as $5 billion, according to top fundraisers and bundlers who are already predicting it will more than double the 2012 campaign's price tag. So $5 billion. I don't know how much is going to be spent on Trump or Rand Paul, but I would imagine a significant amount. $5 billion at current prices is 333 million ounces of silver. 333 million ounces of silver, if it were physical silver purchased, would break the silver market. That's more, much more than the yearly investment demand. That would, What that would do is that would take away silver from manufacturing. That would cause the dreaded panic that we've talked about for so many years where manufacturers are competing with stackers for silver. This money, just $5 billion that is, in my opinion, wasted on a presidential election that's already rigged and the decision that has been decided ahead of time would actually change things if people actually stack physical silver. So that's my opinion on it. We'll see what happens. Now, let's take a look at silver um, of course, the one I'm always following uh, is the Lunar Series. The best deal out there right now is $40.52 if you buy 20 or more over at JM Bullion. They're out of the half ounce. They still have them at Provident for almost 12 bucks. They say they have them here at JM, but they don't have any left for 11.50. so I didn't pick that one. I'm going to be picking this one. This is the one I'm going to be watching if I'm stacking on any new lows. This is the one I'm going to be watching. The ones at Gainesville are gone. Um, then the other one, for people who don't want to pay that premium, you can see at 20 bucks there's about a $5 premium. This is going to be my second pick here. Is this 2015 Somali Elephant. Now, you can see this one's selling for $17.81, and Atmex has thousands of them. I think that's a pretty good deal considering you're getting that now for lower than you're going to get eagles for. And I just did a lookup of last year's elephant. Here's some selling. Here's one that sold for 40 bucks. That's a buy it now. Let's find one that actually went on auction. Uh, 25 bucks, 26 bucks. Here you go. 26 bucks, 18 bids. That's last year's Somali elephant. Is that as good as the Lunar Series performance? No, I don't think it will be. But if you're not comfortable with stacking five bucks above spot, you can come in here and get basically cheaper than you're going to get a premium that's cheaper than the one that's currently going on the inflated Silver Eagles. So that's going to be my second that I'm looking at here is the 2015 Somali Elephant. So just to wrap it all up, we're still trying to find that bottom. We're watching the crazy stuff that's going on in the dollar we're seeing a big rally going on in the euro, supposedly as this Greece thing is put to bed, but who knows if it really is. And now you can see it's starting to reverse. So crazy things in markets, but uh, the same thing going on heading into this election period. The only thing that's really going to make a difference uh, that could change things would be if everybody started stacking silver for all that uh, money that they're spending on campaigns. And we'll talk to you next time.